Hey troops, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan. I'm a former commando from the United Kingdom. Today, keeping up with Ukraine, but on a slightly different note, we will be reacting to why United States of America leaving NATO will cause World War III. It's a video done by Infographics. It's pretty much the reason that this channel took off in the first place was these Infographics um, reactions, guys. So hopefully they allow me to do a reaction to this one. We'll see once it's uploaded, but irrespective, the original video link will be in the description. Go show them some support. And yeah, hopefully you'll like this one, guys. Before we get into it, like, share, and subscribe to the video. Drop a comment for the algorithm, all of that good stuff. And yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing a different perspective on this whole Ukraine thing. Starting off with why United States leaving NATO will cause World War III. Let's do it. East Ukraine, March 2023. Anton huffed and puffed, reaching the truck a second before the driver threw into gear, hauling himself up in the back just in time. All around him, similar trucks were already in motion or waiting with idling engines, their drivers yelling at the rushing soldiers to hurry up and load in. As if to punctuate the point, there was a high-pitched whine in the distance, followed by an explosive blast. Russian artillery was in range and opening up. This wasn't the first time he had to retreat during the course of the 13-month war for his country, but this was perhaps the most painful retreat. For over a year, Ukraine and Russia had slugged it out in a bloody battle for eastern Ukraine. Both sides had advanced and retreated under the weight of each other's offensives. Toward the end of last summer, though, Ukraine had made its greatest gains, liberating the city of Kherson in late September. It felt as if the tide of the war had finally shifted. And then, the U.S. midterm elections came around. In a wholly unprecedented turn of events, a slew of isolationist politicians had been voted into office. Right, so there's uh, an element of truth in this. I didn't. I, I thought they were going to elaborate on things, but the fact that they were mentioned in Curzon was liberated in September obviously changed this, the dynamic of this completely. So, yeah, I, we're going to get it rid anyway. Uh, I don't want to get into politics too much because my American brothers are very friendly until I mention politics and they turn a bit nasty on me. The House of Representatives had quickly put forth a measure to end U.S. membership in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, believing it to be a waste of resources when a real threat to America was in the Pacific, namely China. Pressure on the Senate led to landmark legislature, and with the stroke of a pen, the United States was no longer a member of NATO. This had direct implications for Ukraine's war against Russia. With no more investment in Europe, the United States was no longer as interested in hemming in Russian aggression, and thus funding for the Ukrainian armed forces quickly dried up. Along with the money came an end to millions of rounds of ammunition, harm anti-radar missiles, new artillery, and of course, the vaunted HIMARS system, which... HIMARS has been instrumental in this war. If uh, if that was to stop or if we would, uh, you know, suddenly have to take out... It wouldn't happen. If we had to take the HIMARS out of the situation in Ukraine, then it would... Uh, it would be a, a painful defeat for Ukraine, I would think. I think the HIMARS is instrumental in them you know, maintaining their current level of effectiveness in this war. Jet enabled Ukraine's first and only major offensive at the end of August last year. Ukraine was now a European problem, and Europe's support for the Ukrainian armed forces was a fraction of what it had enjoyed from the United States. The new slew of American politicians represented a shift in attitude from the American taxpayers. Russia was Europe's problem. Problem is, Europe was ill-prepared to deal with the problem, and Anton and his comrades were suffering for it. It was hard to tell which had been the most devastating for his country's war effort, the lack of direct material support or the lack of intelligence support. Before, his country had enjoyed the wealth of information offered by America's vast intelligence gathering apparatus. It's interesting, actually, guys, when we're talking about America's involvement, you know, I get a lot of comments, I read a lot of comments on the videos in turn, in, in, in tune to... Um, many Americans actually don't agree with the war full stop. A lot of Americans who comment on my channel simply do not want them, uh, them as taxpayers to, to, to fund the, to, to foot the bill for Ukraine effectively. Cause when you look at the amount of billions that United States is sending, you know, America truly is, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the, the bigger, um, economical picture in this whole thing. And um, I think people are getting sick of it now in terms of when we look back 20, 30, 40 years, you know, when social media wasn't as prevalent, we could get fed a certain narrative and be happy with that to a degree, okay? But now people can see whatever they want when they want. It's extremely hard to prohibit that, especially with groups such as Telegram and uh, and all the other social media things as well. It's really hard to, to, to put up a blockade against information. So America gets to see what they want when they want want and 
from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, what I see in my comments, most of the Americans just don't want anything to do with Ukraine and they generally don't want to support it financially. That's what I'm gather as well and can you blame them when you think about it at the end of the day they work very hard to have their free um, society in which they live in they've got their own problems at home to worry about here they are giving billions away um i'll let you decide in the comments on that one everything from human intelligence sources to satellite and electronic intercepts all of it feeding targeting data to eliminate russian vips and intelligence preventing russian surprise assaults or reinforcements Ukraine had enjoyed a nearly real-time view on Russian movements. Now that uh -huh. intelligence was reduced to a trickle, the army was largely fighting blind. But the lack of material support hurt too. Surviving HIMARS units no longer had ammunition, and work was being done to try to convert them to fire more available and less capable unguided rocket munitions. The supply of manned portable air defense weapons had all but evaporated, leaving the frontline troops vulnerable to air attack as they once were at the start of the war. Russian tanks can now operate with greatly reduced fear from anti-tank missile threats, as the US had provided the bulk of Ukraine's anti-armor capabilities via its Javelin ATMs. It's interesting. I know this is all notionary. It would what would happen in the event of the United States leaving NATO. Um, well, effectively, you know, without even watching this video, I can tell you now that most of what they're saying is correct. Most of the ammunition supplies would dry up. Most of the support in, in, in the intelligence alone, right, wins this war with the right support financially. Um, without intelligence, you make horrendous decisions, just like you we're seeing with the Russian side right now. They've got, you know, to a degree, the uh, the kit and equipment, to a degree, the manpower. Um, but, you know, they haven't got the right intelligence on the ground, and it uh, shows in many of the regions. They take over land, but they can't maintain it. They take over land, they can't defend it. They try to defend areas, and they do it miserably, okay, because the intelligence is lacking. So, yeah, if America was to turn off the taps, not just financially, but, you know, with their intellect, with their intelligence, with their uh, other support mechanisms, we always mention, all right, the big dollar sign has been the primary factor. It's a big factor, but it's not the overall factor to getting war done, okay? There's so many other isms and things that America is providing that, um, if they didn't, would drastically impact this war. So the question remains, is, uh, is it Ukraine fighting Russia or is it America fighting Russia indirectly? <laughs> You know, we have to ask these questions, don't we? France on the decision for the U.S. to withdraw from NATO and from Europe itself meant he was in retreat once more, but this time it felt much more final. NATO headquarters, Brussels, Belgium. The Ukrainians were taking a beating, now in general retreat across the east. Major General Alex Tuvich shook his head, sadly, reading the intelligence reports in his hand. The U.S. was still tasking satellites, ELINT, and human sources in the war in Ukraine, but it just wasn't sharing that information anymore. A damn stupid move on the politician's behalf, thought the general to himself. With a sigh, he fed the report to the Specialized Disposal Unit for sensitive documents. It was the last piece of hardware in what was his former office inside NATO headquarters as a special attaché to the organization which had lasted for eight decades, but was now in serious jeopardy of collapse. He waited to confirm the disposal unit did its job with the hum of energy. It flash incinerated the document, leaving behind only ashes. He knew its job was done when he could smell the slight aroma of burning paper. He wouldn't bother sending an aide for the device. The Euros could have it, along with his empty office. Gen you know, uh, not just Ukraine, but yeah, Europe would be in a sticky situation if NATO didn't exist with the United States being, um, I don't want to say a figurehead, but you know, it would seem like they were a massive figurehead in this whole organization if they were to go. Um, and they put a lot of money into it, okay? A lot of money, a lot of time and effort. And, you know, effectively keeping us safe. That's why it's there for. It would be a scary thought, horrible prospect to think that the United States would ever leave NATO. Um, I hope, personally, that they never do. General Tuvich stood and took in one last look at what was once one of the cornerstones of American global strategy, then turned his back on the office and 80 years of highly successful foreign policy and walked out the door. He was met by his aide and driver. There was a waiting U.S. Air Force passenger plane at the nearby military airfield, which would return him to the U.S. via Britain, as America and the U.K. still maintained a security alliance. Yes, that's all we need to care about, all right? If all else fails, U.S. U.K. prevails, okay? We've both got the red, white, and blue in our flag. So, the red, white, and blue, it, it's, it's for both of us, really, isn't it, guys? Okay, I'm going to say it and mean it for both of us. U.S. forces and bases there weren't being deactivated as they were across mainland Europe. 
as he passed within a few doors of one of the general. In fact, I'm going to pause it here. I'm just going to I'm just going to throw this out here. UK US alliance, greatest alliance that's ever been. When you look at our history, fighting one another and stuff like that, like big brothers and little brothers do. Um, US UK, it's it's a phenomenal thing. I'm quite I'm quite proud to be part of that. If I'm honest with you, that's a little bit of a bragging point that I know many countries can't have, but I I latch on to that. That's something that I think, yeah, I'm I'm quite happy with that. Secretly, okay. Even more so the fact that I served in the military, I served with you guys, US military, it's it's a good thing, isn't it, really? And I think there's a lot of people jealous of that. Rural assembly meeting rooms, he could hear the Latvian representative practically screaming at his NATO partners. He didn't blame them. Since the U.S. announced its withdrawal from the alliance, Russia had reinforced its eastern flank along the Baltics. It was all but a certainty that Russia would attempt to intimidate the breakaway Soviet republics into returning to the fold. He wondered if they would actually use force, though, and what the hell Europe would do about it if they did. As he turned the corner, he was greeted by Lieutenant Colonel Beaumont de Champ, one of France's representatives, here at Brussels headquarters. The two had enjoyed a close working relationship, and he quite liked the man. He barely even held the fact that he was French against him anymore. For his part... <laughs> That's something that I would say. Oh, you know how I feel about the French guys on this channel. I've got French family. I, 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 yeah, yeah, we... You know how I feel about the French, all right? It's, uh, it goes back a long way when you look into the war history and stuff. He kind of did us dirty when we were trying to take over America back in the day. Um, yeah, bit of bit of animosity still there. Yeah, the French, yeah, they're, they're all right. I've did a bit of training with them back in the day in Gabon. We were better soldiers, though, I'll say that. Deschamps ignored that Tuvich's favourite meals typically included hamburgers of some sort. The champ <laughs> fell in alongside Tuvich, speaking in a thick Alsatian French accent. Your government could have at least left us with logistics. The Alsatian bit wasn't needed. That wasn't necessary. This guy hates the French more than I do. I'm only joking, guys, that don't hate the French, okay? I, I, again, I know many French people. Support. I agree, damn foolish of the politicians, but Tuvich shrugged his shoulders. Americans got tired of paying the bills for European security. The Champ bristled at the comment, yet he couldn't deny there was at least some truth to this. His own nation was only 0.07% away from meeting the alliance's minimum funding goal of 2% GDP and had only increased spending in recent years under intense pressure from the US. What is that American expression? The matter is soon to hit the fan? Major General Alex Tuvich <laughs> nodded solemnly. Yes, my friend, the matter is in fact about to hit the fan. Salsa, <laughs> Estonia. 12 Mi-8 helicopters of the Russian Aerospace Forces crossed the border into Estonia, flying just barely over the rooftops of the neighboring town of Satsa. The helicopters sat down at pre-planned positions around the western perimeter of the town, disgorging their squads of Russian paratroopers. A few minutes later, a force of Russian T-90s and BTR-80s overran the border police checkpoint, smashing through the flimsy wooden barricade. There was a brief exchange of gunfire with some Estonian border troops, but within six hours, the small town was firmly under the control of the Russian military. From the town square, the Russians had hung their country's flag. Hey, when you when we're talking about Estonia, seriously now, if it's not just US, it's UK presence as well in Estonia and other areas, these little neighboring, um, I said little, these neighboring countries to you know Russia, Ukraine, you know your Moldovas, your Estonias, your Polands and stuff. Granted, Poland would put up a tremendous fight, but it would uh, without NATO support involving the US. There'd be a lot of trouble. They would be in a lot of trouble, I think, okay, in terms of how far that reach for Russia could um, could actually go. Realistically speaking, when they say it's, um, you know, a European security is what NATO is. It's, um, you know, the United States basically looking after us. It truly is in the grand scheme of things. You don't have to like the United States and, and you don't have to agree with what I'm saying. Um, but what you should agree with is the fact that you know, NATO without the United States involved wouldn't really be NATO as we know it, okay? It would be a shadow of itself, and it wouldn't be nowhere near as effective, all right? 10 Downing Street, United Kingdom. The British Prime Minister did her best to hide her concern. Arrayed before her on multiple screens were the leaders or representatives of the remaining members of the NATO alliance. The emergency conference had been called immediately upon reports of the first Russian troops crossing into Estonian territory. In the last six hours, the Russians had secured the small town, and the new satellite reconnaissance seemed to indicate that they were digging into defensive positions. Estonia had attempted to fly several drones over the area, but they had all been shot down, so live intelligence was out of the question. However, it didn't seem as if the Russians had any intention of advancing their attack. 
The Prime Minister realized she'd been asked a question and snapped out of her internal mental review. I'm sorry, what was that? The representative from the Estonian government was on the main screen, looking understandably frustrated. Ma'am, I'm going to ask you again, will Britain honor its commitment to NATO's NRF? And that was a question with a million implications. She could feel the weight of history pressing down on her. The fate of Europe in the 21st century very much depended on her answer. NATO's response force and very rapid response force had been set up to deal with exactly this type of Russian incursion. Yeah, but it hasn't been set up to deal with this type of incursion without the support from the United States. Interesting this, I've never actually thought of this in this way. Would we, the United Kingdom, be inclined to still um, live up to our expectations within that organisation of NATO's reaction force? Um, would, be, would we be up for the job still knowing that the United States hasn't got our back and America's had our back and we've had their back for a long time, militarily speaking? I think the answer would be no. I don't think that we'd want to get involved as quickly as uh, we maybe would if we didn't have the United States there to back us up. I'll be honest with you. And if it was down to me, I would too not be um, not be willing really to go in anywhere without knowing that I've got that you know that clear support that we've worked hard with uh, to to build over the past few years. You know that relationship that we've got with the US. So. Yeah, this, is, this opens up a lot of cans of worms, guys. And I wonder if this material's been put out now to make us think of that. Sometimes we can have something for so long, uh, we sometimes don't appreciate it as much. And maybe it's the same with the United States being part of NATO. Maybe you guys disagree. That's what you got to let me know in the comments for. I'm definitely open for a debate. It was well known that for at least a decade, Russia's Vladimir Putin had toyed with the idea of a fate accompli attack against NATO. The seizure of a single meaningless village somewhere along the Baltics, not enough to warrant full-scale war in normal circumstances, but enough to test the NATO alliance. If NATO hesitated, the entire concept of mutual defense collapsed and the alliance would inevitably splinter, exactly as Putin wanted. Despite his catastrophic setbacks in Ukraine, which were now being reversed, America's exit from the alliance had given him exactly the opportunity he'd been dreaming of. He didn't even wait for America to fully leave the continent. European command still had several dozen planes waiting to be loaded with equipment and airfields across Germany. The PM looked over at the screen with the Turkish representative. Turkey had been striding a fine line between Europe and Russia for years now, but had so far seemed to be committed to the alliance in regards to assisting Ukraine. However, the incursion into Estonia had put Turkey in a position where it finally had to decide who it really wanted to be friends with and faced the prospect of fighting Russia without US aid. Well, she could already see the answer on the man's stony face. It wasn't that NATO without America wasn't a match for the Russian military, it's that the US provided the very backbone of what a modern army needs to win a fight. Transportation, logistical support, and special mission aircraft. Can't uh, deny that there, that capability in particular, mainly the logistical thing. Logistics is so much more troops than just uh, just wagons and trucks. It's so much more than that. Okay, the grand scheme of things, you wouldn't, you would be blown away at the sheer size of United States logistical capability. All right, it is phenomenal. The amount of moving parts that they've got globally is is monumental it's 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 horrendously big okay um i mean you just wouldn't be able to fathom how important it is and what they bring to the table is not just a sheer number of logistical um aid posts around the world it's the fact that they literally have a presence all over the world as well um and, and can launch pretty much from anywhere all right with a rapid reaction force capable of fighting and winning wars on multiple fronts irrespective of where they are they could be on the top and bottom of the world and they could fight still you know how hard that is not just to provide but to maintain it's insane okay that's why when we talk about war and stuff like that we talk about russia there's a lot of hearsay with russia there's a lot of stereotypes that we live on and russia have lived upon that as well backing on that and betting on that people will believe the hype for as long as they can there's one thing that this war has seen is that yes they can still be devastating in their own way but they're nowhere near as capable as what we all believed them to be due to the scaremongering that happened over the you know especially in the cold war and stuff um britain were terrified of russia in the 80s and 90s uh, when the troops were based in germany they the threat was imminent it could come over the border at any time over there that was uh what i'd heard from friends who served in that region so you know united states 
puts a lot into this and don't underestimate just how phenomenally better they are than pretty much any military out there. All right. And I'm not just saying that for bragging points or to get people on side from uh, all around the globe. You know, I can't speak for 50 years from now, but right now, America is phenomenal and uh, no one comes close. Trust me on that. No one comes close. U.S. firepower was considerable and nice, but it was the loss of U.S. logistics and support assets that made a response to Russia's incursion difficult. The alliance had scrambled to shore up its deficiencies since the U.S. announced its surprise exit, and the response and very fast response forces were at least fully equipped. But those couldn't win a war on their own. They were meant to deter a war, not stop one in progress. Russia had called NATO's bluff, and without U.S. air power and intelligence immediately available to the alliance, it would take weeks to coordinate an effective response from the varying military powers. Britain was having trouble even keeping its current ships fully manned, and had already cannibalized a few vessels of their crews in the last 10 years just to keep others operational. Germany struggled to fully equip its commitment to NATO's response force, having to borrow equipment from other units to do so. Yeah, our Navy is shocking in comparison to what it used to be. We used to be the, you know, the, the most formidable naval f uh, force on the planet, and uh, we are a shadow of our former self. Yes, we're still quite capable in comparison to other countries. Granted, many will say, many military experts will say, well, what's the point of us being as capable as we were before when we've got America who has the most capable military, um, specifically Navy on the planet anyway, and we are really tight with them? Well, you know, situations like this, if it was possible for the United States to leave something like NATO, hypothetically thinking, um, then, you know, we need to be worried about that. And that support, it might not last forever. So I do think we still need to maintain a, not necessarily the highest capability on the planet, but we do need to fare our own with pretty much anyone else other than America at this point in time, okay? and its air force hadn't been considered fully ready for combat for years now due to maintenance and logistical problems. She scanned the faces of the NATO representatives on the screens before her. The French president had a grim but determined look on his face. He had already pledged French support for the NRF, and then again, of course he did. France seemed to be one of the few powers in Europe whose military was ready for such a war, she thought sadly. The Polish representative looked equally grim and determined. Poland was fiercely opposed to Russian aggression, having suffered the brunt of it for centuries. One of her American military contacts had lamented that leaving Poland had for the U.S. military like than leaving a dear friend behind in a bad situation. But other faces she looked at didn't share the same hardened result. Turkey, Hungary, Finland, and Sweden, the two newest members who had confidently joined the alliance after the invasion of Ukraine, didn't look ready to honor their commitment to NATO's NRF. Committing the U.K. would tip the balance, throwing NATO into a full... What do you guys think about that? Sweden, Finland... You know, would they honour their, as they've just said there, would they honour that? I think they would. I think they'd be right on up there with the terms of who would honour it. Granted, the risk factor is a little bit different due to the nature of how close they are to Russia. But yeah, I thought, I'm surprised they've came to that conclusion, actually. I think they're probably one of the most committed countries on the planet in terms of the way they soldier, the way their mentality is militarily. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why he said that, actually. Maybe I'm missing something. ...scale war. Not doing so meant Russia won, and NATO would come apart at the seams as it lost all credibility. All because of one damn village built too close to the Russian border. Clearing her throat, the Britain Prime Minister prepared herself to make history. Gentlemen and ladies, after much consideration, I believe it is in Britain's and Europe's best interest, if the British Armed Forces now go check out, could Russia win a war... Right, so um, I will actually be checking out a few more of these videos, guys, and doing reactions to them because uh, I actually miss doing these reactions. Um, it's nice just to be able to watch something and react on it honestly with my own opinions, you know. Why USA leaving NATO will cause World War Three? Well, for many reasons, actually, troops, okay? More deeper than you'd actually think. Well, you just have to look at the sheer um, volume of what they're supporting NATO with. Just forget about the money for a second. In terms of their own capability, all right, they're putting a lot more into their... Um, it, they're putting a lot more percentage of their income in their country into the military for a start, okay? I think we put, like, less than 2% in the UK at this moment. I might be wrong on that, but America puts a phenomenal amount into their military. So what they bring to the table is a fantastic military capable of uh, deploying pretty much anywhere on the globe and fighting on multiple fronts at the same time and be able to sustain and support themselves for a long time to the highest standard. Do you know how hard that is? It's really, really hard. They can do it. They have done it. And uh, they'll probably end up doing it again in the future. Hopefully not too soon, though.
guys, if you've made it this far and you want to support the channel, please consider joining the Patreon. We are doing ad-free, uncensored content on there pretty much every week now. And there's one thing for sure. Patreon sent me an email the other day. The features that are coming to that platform are phenomenal. Okay, and it's going to be a very, very interactive, immersive place to be very, very soon. So, I'll see you there, guys. Link is in the description. Peace.